I'm tired of the other women. I'm tired of him using me. For two months, I didn't even hear from you. Where were you? I'm overwhelmed, man. I love you. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. He fooled you about 50 times. We are a financial disaster because of him. Divorce doesn't exist where I'm from. Neither one of you is wrong for having your opinions, but it just makes you wrong for each other. There's been a huge breach of trust, according to you. She was on the fast with the pastor. She sent her pictures with a smoothie of straw in her mouth. Mm. And it's Sasha McMuffin. Can I eat this, pastor? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, hold on, why you got to send pictures with it? Here is today's case. This wife says she married a master manipulator who cheats and lies. He says there's only one person to blame for their problems, her sister. Will this couple end their eight-month marriage? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Stacy from Aylet, Virginia. Stacy, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of the Nesbitt versus Nesbitt. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> Miss Patricia Nesbitt? Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, <clears throat> Mr. John Nesbitt? Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today. The two of you have been married for eight months. Yep. You're already here. Yes. As newlyweds. <laughs> You've been having some problems. Yes. yes. And you want to talk about them in Divorce Court today because you said you're ready to go your separate I'm ways? ready to go. Mm. What's going on? Give me some background. Me and Mr. Nesbitt have been together for four years. We have a daughter. Um, she's two years old. I have three children from a previous relationship. Our whole relationship has been built on lies, manipulation, cheating, and I'm just tired and I'm ready to go. He could pop a smile at a female and she's just gonna drop her drawers and mm. I'm ready to be done with that altogether. What do you have to say, Mr. Nesbitt? Your Honor, um, I love Patricia. We both been through some things. I felt like I've changed my actions as far as the cheating and the manipulation or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to save my marriage if possible. It's been eight months. You said you changed your ways. Yes. Give me an example, Ms. Nesbitt, of what you say has happened that's led you here today. We were like having like rocky times and I was being nice and I decided to treat us to a trip to Las Vegas. And was this before or after you got married? This was before. Mm -hmm. You know, two or three months later, I found out that he went back. And I was confused as to why, because we went and we enjoyed it, and that was supposed to be for us. And he told me that he went with some coworkers, and I didn't believe that, of course, because manipulation. And I went through his phone, like company directory and all that stuff, and only one name stood out to me. I ended up texting her, and I let her know that I knew that they had a relationship or doing whatever. I'm sorry, how did you know that from the company directory? Um, because I went through his online banking and all that stuff. I matched it up with the numbers. They were okay. sending money permission. back and forth. So you, like... you, you put on a full-fledged investigation. Yep. Mm. You looked at the numbers in his phone, yep. matched it to the company directory, mm -hmm. then went on his online accounts, yep. and it added up to... You went to Vegas with somebody else? Yep, a co-worker. Yes, Your Honor. Due to the problems that we was having, as far as arguing, and I wanted to put some distance between us. He went there to, to be with and, um, well, I mean, you definitely put distance between exactly. you, but you took somebody else. Nah, that person took me. While I you were at a distance. The person took me. I didn't pay for anything. I just looked a at it as a trip. free trip. Like, That's why When I, I came back, I was not talking to that woman no more. Okay. What happened in Vegas stayed in Vegas, mm. is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I'm still trying to get the details. But you apologized. I did, yeah. Apologized. You... You no know, flowers and stuff. I mean, I don't... Acts of service. Acts of service. Not enough. And that was before the two of you got married? Yes. Before. Mm -hmm. So you found out about that? Yep. We had a, a little argument, and randomly he was like, I'm gonna marry you. And I was like, okay. So he In the him... midst of the argument? I don't think it was that random. A... It was. Was that an official proposal? For him, I would say. And we put together the, mat, um, the wedding within, like, two weeks. But, like, I, want, I wanted to be with him, and I felt like, you know, maybe this was, like, his final act of service, mm -hmm. that he was gonna just <clears throat> be with me. And so everything changed after that, and things got better, right? <laughs> I, I thought it would be. I proposed to her because I wanted to show her that, I don't know, I manipulated and lied for a long time, but you the woman I want out of all of them. I don't want to be with any of them. So I thought by saying I would marry you, you understand, because you know what type of person I am. So how did that work out? Well, I started recovering more information. As so was I. <laughs> what was the information you recovered? So when I figured out the names, but I did see the transactions, he was sending money to her. It was like a little $20, $30, but she was sending 
bunches of money back to him. So like 450, 170, like he even told me that she helped to get his license unsuspended. You know, things like that to make me a little jealous, I guess. So it happened before you got married and then after? Yeah, it was a lot. He does that a lot. He'll just bring up another, another person because of my attitude or how I'm feeling towards him. Uh -huh. He'll be like, oh, well, she don't do that. She's submissive, blah, blah, blah. Like, and the other crazy. woman? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Nesbitt? I mean, I ain't seen nobody turn down no free money yet. Like, somebody gonna offer to give you some money, I mean, I see, like, they gonna take it. I wasn't sending her no money back, so... He's lying. It's like a, uh, <laughs> if you spend 200 on me and I give you $20, what percentage, percentage of that? It's you like gave you're giving your money. Well, was right. this a woman you're having an affair with sending you money? Eight to nine months. Mm. So it's not free money. This is somebody you, that you're seeing on a personal level. His girlfriend. So, I, mean, I mean, you act like uh, somebody on the street just sending you <laughs> wire transfers. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't my lady or not. She know that. You're married. Mm. Okay. Okay, she's not your lady, but she's sending you money. You're still having an affair after you got married? No. If she tell me to leave the house, I'll be having to find somewhere to go, so okay. I usually go there. So you said that the reason why you continue to step out is because of problems in your marriage? Yes, uh, the disrespect, <laughs> uh, the constant anger. What is she angry about? The co-worker about how we went to Vegas. Okay, so she's angry about you having an affair? Yes. But we done went to like three trips already after that. I didn't bought her things, acts of <laughs> gifts. He thinks um, that. I okay, so her you're name. saying she hasn't gotten past the affair. She's still angry. So that's why you keep stepping out. So the two of you are in a perpetual cycle. Right. Because it's like the same energy I keep coming back to the same anger, the same, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Oh, no, I don't have to do this. Uh huh. She tell me, it'll be with the girl, like, even though she's not even like relevant. Are you posting photos with an ex on your social media? No. <laughs> What? I posted a picture of him cleaning up his own house. So you posted Thanks a photo cleaning. of him cleaning just to show the world that he's a good cleaner? Her thighs was all laid out and her, her feet was on this man's pocket, robbing him. I tapped his For the whole pocket. world to see. The real issues for you are her anger and unforgiveness. Yes. And you haven't been able to get past it and it's pushing you out to continue to step out. She was also entertaining males as well. well who is she entertaining? How do you, how do you know? Exes. Give me an example of what you say she's doing. Please. Uh, they sending pictures back and forth, talking about good times with the kids. She, on, she posted them on her social media accounts. Mm -hmm. mm. Are you posting photos with an ex on your social media? No. <laughs> What? No. I posted a picture of him cleaning up his own house. Four times she posted the same ex. It was nothing. It wasn't like, oh my God, I love you so much. So you posted Thanks a photo cleaning. of him cleaning? That's one. Yeah. For Another what? one. Just ah, to show the know. world that he's a good cleaner? Yeah. The, the next one is her legs was all the way out, like her thighs was all the way out, and her, her feet was on this man's pocket. Right. Robbing him. No. In a photo. In no. a photo. It's a boomerang. Instagram. It's a boomerang. I tapped the whole his pocket world and I said I was, I was feeling the money clip. He has like, a lot of anger issues. His anger is like through the roof, and that's another reason. Well, why. what is he angry about? The photos? He's bringing his relationship from his past into ours because she let on a life behind the scenes, and he's thinking that I'm doing it, I'm gonna do the same thing. So it's like he's trying to beat me to it. He thinks I want revenge on him for the, the Vegas thing. Well, all I really want is just peace. Have you stepped out in the marriage no. at all? No. Do you believe that she has? Yes. You're in our really? marriage? Yes, I do. Besides those photos, why do you think she's actually stepped out and had an affair? Um, they still was talking, and I'm as your husband now, listen, I don't want this happening. You Communicating know, like, outside of the fact that they have children. Right? Yes. Yeah, no. Like him sending pictures me at a, his birthday party or something, like little stuff like that. How or can her I painting not get a so you don't trust it? Is what you're saying? I don't trust it. She no, I don't trust it. Mm. You talk about these anger issues, but you said there was a big confrontation. Yes. Yeah, so he gets up, grabs his keys, grabs my daughter, and he takes my daughter to the co-worker's house who you're sleeping with. Mm. And I felt like that was super disrespectful mm -hmm. because, first of all, now we are married. This is our child, and you're, like, introducing her to a, a person who you claim means nothing to you. Mm -hmm. So I try to track my daughter's iPad because I got a tracking devices on it. He turned that off. He had his phone on Do Not Disturb. I couldn't get in contact with him at all. So I logged into his, um, his phone, and I seen where he was at, and I drove there, and I texted the female and I let her know to tell him to bring my daughter downstairs. Mm -hmm. And I called two of my family members. They went up and got my daughter, and that was that. I left him there. I told him that he could be well, because you know you keep going back somewhere, you obviously want to be there. 
Why did you take your child to this woman's house? So I see in her phone her ex being around my daughter. He is a okay. Liar. Okay, more than she said. Did the two of you talk about that? You have a discussion? Yes. Nah, there's no discussion. I didn't even knew my daughter was around this man, but I was not around to bring my daughter around women or even my the person I was with. So when I see this right here, right now, it's like, nah, I'm not gonna just allow it to happen because you was telling me something and doing something else. So I'm like, I'm taking my daughter with me. I wasn't gonna take it to a lady house until mm -hmm. she started being real, like, nasty about it and, oh, that's my daughter, I could do what I want. It's mm -hmm. our daughter. He wrote her one day, say, how's our daughter doing? Mm -hmm. It's my daughter, like. And I didn't respond. I did not, I didn't know. I mean, obviously, he's, he's doing that to get a rise. Yes, and it's Why working. are you doing that? Because he's jealous. I left him for him. Oh, like so the both of you were in a relationship and we when left, you met? Yeah, we and left, yeah. And left the others mm -hmm. for each other? Oh, so that explains why there's so much mistrust between uh -huh. the two of you. Mm -hmm. Because when you met, you stepped out on your relationships to be with each other. Right. And you're not happy now with the prize that you got? I, I thought. <laughs> that, like, you know, when we first met, though, <laughs> he was like, I've never been with somebody who's also my friend. Like, he was like my best friend. We were together all the time. You text this other woman. This is what you write to her. I just found out you've been doing whatever she's been doing with him all year. If you don't plan on keeping him for a lifetime, I suggest you tell the men to pack up and go about his business. Mm -hmm. And she said, you can definitely keep him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. He, he had a confrontation with my relatives. Who is the relative you're referring to that is a witness to some of this anger you say you deal with in your relationship? Um, my sister. He knows, like, you know, a bunch of the situations that we go through. I confide in her a lot. You actually have a video statement from your sister that you submitted to court? Yes. Okay, I'll take a listen to that now. Honestly, Your Honor, I feel John is a habitual womanizer, and he's been using my sister from the very beginning. Me and other members of our family and some of her close friends um, have told her that she was the come-up for him, and it wasn't the other way around, and it is proven to be true because the house that they live in is in her name, the clothes that he wears, she buys, um, the car that he drives is in her name, um, and all he does is stomp and whine and cry and um, threaten to leave, which I feel like he should just do already, just go. Um, he has no respect for her or her time. Me and him have gotten to many words with each other because of the constant disrespect towards her and other members of my family. And, um, I just want what's best for my sister. And I feel like she's holding on to something that is, it wasn't put together right in the first place. So I feel like they just need to call it quits. Mr. Nesbitt, you said that these issues that have, have been brought up in court today are in the past. Yes, Your Honor. Why, why do you say they're in the past? I don't step out. I don't mean, I, I, I left, but I don't leave as... He high. leaves often. Her attitude is still the same, though, so mm -hmm. I feel like, how are you gonna change when you get the same results? Like, mm -hmm. all right, I'm gonna come back, we're gonna be different, you the same person, why I'm supposed mm -hmm. to just put up with it? Because mm -hmm. I want you to change a certain level of respect, mm -hmm. manipulation, stop entertaining all these, I mean, these males or Instagram. Whether or not she is actually stepping out in your mind, it's real. In his mind, yes. And there is mistrust there because the way the two of you got together. In your mind, if she left somebody else to be with you, what's stopping her from leaving you to be with somebody else? Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, even in the midst of this eight-month marriage, these other women are involved. I mean, I'm yeah. talking about real conversations here. You submitted a text message. I want to see the text message you submitted. Yes. So you text this other woman six months ago. This is what you write to her. Mm -hmm. This is Trish, John's wife. Yep. I heard you knew about me. I just found out you've been doing whatever she's been doing <laughs> with him all year, and he has you saved in his phone as <laughs> money. If you don't plan on keeping him for a lifetime, I suggest you tell the men to pack up and go about his business. Mm -hmm. And she said, you can definitely keep him for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Even after this message, they go to work and she gives him a key to her apartment. And I find it mm -hmm. and I keep it. So now I have the key to the apartment. And why do you have a key to her apartment? Like, oh, yo, let me get you a key. She's like, oh, you should give me a key. Like, I'm like, nah, I'm good. I walked away. She just put it in my book bag. Mm -hmm. And he kept it. So you weren't really ready to, for marriage? No. 
That's how I feel like I was. You feel like you were. Do you yeah. still feel that way? I do. You do? I don't think you really believe that, even when you said it right now. I just don't want to be disrespected. I don't just cheat like how she trying to make it seem more. Yeah, you say or, you, you said you're being pushed into it. And that's what's keeping the cycle going. pushed out. She's telling me get out, packing my stuff up, mm -hmm. like all this type of thing. And like, you're I can't pulling him out. You're telling him to get out because you said that the, the like, cheating is, is, no. is a perpetual problem. Only time I've told him to leave is when he's already told me that he don't have to be here. So since this woman is playing in the background, he could not talk to her for months and show up at her door. She's still going to open it. He doesn't believe he needs to change because he said that you need to change. Right. And so you're both pointing the finger at each other. So the only change that, that is going to take place in this marriage is when one of you makes a decision about whether you want to stay or whether you want to go because the status quo right now isn't working for either of you. Exactly. You're not happy and you're not happy. So the, what needs to happen in order for this marriage to be salvaged? He feels disrespected, and that's why he continues to do the things that he's doing. It's not really in the past, if we're talking about six months ago. Exactly. Mm. And so the two of you have reached an impasse. So you have a decision you want to make. Your sister came to court today to say she feels that you have been completely disrespected from day one in this relationship, but yet you've continued to move forward and you've continued to be in this marriage when these other women are ever present. Just wait. For Just big and back. bold. Yep. You know, that's the difference. If, if we were weighing the options here and we were tipping the scales, you say you don't trust her, but you have these other women who are just, like, out there. Yeah. This is a difficult case. You've only been married for eight months. Mm -hmm. You're in your 20s. When your relationship isn't working out, you have one of two choices. You can do the work that you think the two of you need to do in order to move forward, if you actually think somebody has the maturity, the good intentions, the wherewithal to be the person that you need right now in your life, or you must pivot and say, you know what, some things aren't working out right now. We need some time to grow. I need to learn how to handle my anger in an emotionally mature way. I need to learn what's the best way to respond when we have conflict, because right now our response to conflict is blowing up the relationship. Either you're going to be good parents, go back to the friendship you had, or you're going to stay in a toxic relationship if the two of you keep going the way you are. Very toxic. So that choice is yours. What is your decision? Um, I'm ready to go. I can't, like, the things that he do, I just can't take it. It's like an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. he, his, his assumptions, because of his guilty conscience, is just, like, outlandish, and I'm just mm. tired. I can't. I don't want to be looked at through a scope every day. I don't want you to come in here look, looking through the house, making sure, like, nobody was in here. Like, I don't want to do that mm -hmm. with somebody I chose. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose anybody else. Mr. Nesbitt? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to change. I, I just want to work on our marriage, like you said. I feel like we both have to put in work. She, mm -hmm. We both could say we did things for the longest time. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to tell you, the best advice I can give the two of you, if you want to see change, is to be the change. Stop looking at the other person and saying, you know what, she, this is what they need to change. Mm -hmm. And look at your own self. You can't change somebody else, you can change yourself. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see progress, why don't you start with yourself? Good luck to both of you. Okay. <clears throat> what she said about changing ourselves, it's really making me reflect and, um, you know, if we could work on ourselves, maybe like one day in the future, we'll be able to be copacetic and uh, good marriage and great parents to our daughter. I'm gonna go home and we're gonna see if we could work it out. I realized I need to start taking accountability for more of my actions and not put the finger at anybody else and change my behaviors and people I surround myself with. I'm gonna be patient. I'm gonna um, stop entertaining other women and talking to them and leaving.